Okay, thanks very much. Um, so, I've talked about this project I, countless numbers of times. Believe it or not, this is the first time anyone's asked me to talk about the patient and public involvement element of it. So, I'm actually really pleased to be able to come and say something about that part of the project today. Normally, I talk about the evaluation or the behaviour change development aspect of the work that we did. So uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, using a young person's partnership board as part of the development of Warwickshire's Respect Yourself campaign. So um, just to give you a bit of context and background, um, what happened was Warwickshire have got and have had for many, many years uh, a sexual health campaign aimed at young people, sort of 13 to 19 plus year olds, um, around their sexual health and well-being. It was the sort of answer to the teenage pregnancy strategy back in the kind of late 90s, early 2000s. And they've had a website for that campaign since 2006. It was beginning to look a bit tired and dated, though, when we were sort of approaching 2012. So they wanted to redevelop it at that time. Uh, and uh, concurrently with that, um, public health doctor in Warwickshire at the time was really keen to develop an app, a smartphone app, um, for supporting people to access sexual health services in the area. And to cut a long story short, the two projects ended up being combined, and we went about developing a combined website with a web app. So basically a mobile website that looks good on your tablet or your smartphone device, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, things I'm not going to talk about today, for once, are the, the, the behaviour change co uh, content of that particular intervention development, but I'll just touch on it where it's particularly relevant. Um, but that was part of the, the process of what we were trying to achieve as well. Um, and as I said, there was a team of people involved, so that was a public health doctor, the Respect Yourself campaign manager, uh, myself and other people from my team who are sexual health um, and behaviour change experts at Coventry University, and we also had a sex education consultant who was involved in the project, and obviously later on a web developer. I'll just tell you how those um, came together a bit as we go through. Um, so we started the project with a pretty traditional needs analysis. That was part of our sort of intervention development process. It's quite typical. We had some focus groups um, with the target population, and we were trying to understand something about the barriers and facilitators to sexual health service access uh, and collect data from them as well as the literature to inform the content and the thinking and the development of the website. Um, those focus groups included young people who are in full-time education, um, those not in education, employment or training, um, and some looked after young people. I put looked after training. I think my train of thought was going on. I was like, looked after young um, people were in there as well. Um, and fairly typical of that approach, we've got content analysis of transcripts, which was contributing um, to the content of the intervention development. That's fairly normal. What's also quite typical about the strategies we would use to design an intervention is that we would um, engage in consultation with the target audience. Um, and one thing we were trying to do um, a little bit differently was really get them involved in the development process much more fully for this particular project. So we created what we've called a young person's partnership board. Um, and that's quite different from the traditional consultative approach that we typically used in the past. So I'm going to try and explain to you a little bit about um, what their involvement was like and what they were doing as part of the project. Um, so there was a co-creation group of 10 young people aged between 11 and 16 years. Um, they were, um, and we also employed, sorry, an independent sex education consultant to support and facilitate them um, throughout the process of their engagement. So that's a guy called Johnny Hunt who runs um, a, a company called Going Off the Rails and does quite a lot of work in sexual health in the Warwickshire region. Um, we recruited the young people from just one school um, in Warwickshire and um, we asked them to suggest two students from each year group across the school, so year seven when they're only 11 or 12 years old, uh, up to um, year 11, 15, 16, doing their GCSEs. Um, and the PSHE coordinator there deliberately selected, um, you know, in discussion with us, um, and suggested young people who were actually not particularly well engaged with the schooling process, who were not your kind of typical voices, who were heard normally in the kind of boards and, and, and things that um, young people get engaged in as extracurricular activities. So we were searching for some different voices um, amongst that crowd of young people. Um, they then started to attend weekly um, lunchtime meetings that were facilitated by Johnny Hunt, the, the sexual health consultant. 
Uh, and initially those sessions were about Johnny doing some rapport building with the young people, um, giving them some sex education training. So although the school that we were working with um, was already doing pretty good stuff on PSHE, um, he wanted to make sure they're all up to the same level in terms of their understanding and knowledge around sex education, sexual health issues, so that they had the confidence and the terminology to engage on these particular issues. So he spent at least three weeks doing that sort of work with them before moving on to get them involved in the project. And so it's a gradual sort of phased approach um, to embed them in the project work. Um, once that started and we were getting them more involved in the project on a rotating basis, so two young people each time came along to the project steering group meetings and we held every monthly meeting at the school so they didn't need to travel anywhere, we went to them um, and um, they were supported by Johnny and their contribution to those meetings and we, we went out of our way in our project meetings to make sure that we explained the sorts of things we were you know, delivering on the agenda or working with on the agenda that week and, and really trying to engage them fully in the discussions and the decision making processes about the project. Um, and obviously one of the things that we really wanted their involvement in was decisions about the actual content on the website. Um, so that was really, really important part of the process. Um, and one of the things that we were quite keen for them to do is that they would come along, they would get engaged in the discussions and the debate about what was going to happen, get engaged in the decision making, but also then obviously act as representatives for the, the wider board of young people, take um, decisions, ideas, thoughts back to their group, weekly group meetings with Johnny and the school so that the wider team could feed into that um, thinking and then the next two representatives who came along next time around would feed back into the thought processes and the decision making. So that's how we went about that. Um, and as I said, we tried to give them a hand in all of the decisions uh, and gave them a real voice to, to bring their ideas and suggestions to the table. Um, another thing that we did to support them and help them to engage was create, or Johnny I should say, created a private Facebook page for them and that enabled them to engage in the project kind of asynchronously to the, um, to the project steering group meetings and to their weekly meetings with Johnny. Um, and as the project developed and we actually got to the web development stage, it was crucial to their input because then the designers were able to put suggestions, content, and they could easily feed into that whole process. Um, so that Facebook page really helped them to communicate. Um, and I'll give you an example of some of the things that came up being anonymized on that website in just a second. Another key area of their involvement in the project was um, once myself and, and the, the health psychologist that I work with had done our kind of technical specification around content based on behaviour change type work, we came up with a technical specification document, um, but we also asked for input from the young people specifically into the specification document that went out for tender to appoint the web developer in the process. Um, and there was a particular requirement in the tender um, for whoever was appointed to develop the, the website and web app to make sure they communicated directly with the Young Persons Partnership Board via their Facebook page and so anyone appointed to, to the tender needed to do that. Um, and the young people um, uh, interviewed the tender um, applicants themselves with us uh, and were a really primary part in making the decision about who got the job to develop this particular website and web app. Um, in the end it was a unanimous one. We had a, a a unanimously favoured applicant, um, so that was fine. We didn't end up having to have any arguments with them about it. Uh, we were all very clear on that. Um, and they, and, and the, the tender applicant who was successful did a fantastic job of using the Facebook page to engage with the young people um, about content ideas and so on. Um, and there's just some um, little snippets here from their Facebook page. So George at Diva Creative was the project manager um, at the web developers and he would put up ideas and, and get feedback from the young people um, on things that had come out of the direct project meetings and steering groups in terms of suggestions based on their thinking. Um, and that was there. We've removed some of the identifiers there, but that was some of them commenting on the actual logo, which I've put on the slide there, which Respect Yourself uses. Um, if you've never seen the website, um, that's a screenshot of it. Um, the web address, if you're interested, is just respectyourself.info. 
so nice and easy to find. So that's the main website. It's what it looks like if you go on a computer and have a look at it. And then that's what the web app version looks like if you look at it on a normal computer screen. Obviously, if you're viewing that on a smartphone or a tablet device, um, it's optimized for that particular screen. So it looks a bit more sensible and less replicated in that context. And then I just thought I'd finish with a few uh, notes about the outcomes for the Young People's Partnership Board and, and those who were involved in the project. So they still exist as a group. They're still active on their Facebook page. Um, and having worked with Johnny on this project, he continues to work with them on sexual health projects that he's engaged with um, in the region of Warwickshire, which is really exciting. Um, they were invited by us to participate in a national event we held in 2013 um, called Innovation in Sexual Health um, and, and sort of actively participating in the workshops that we delivered um, or other people were delivering at that event, which was really exciting and fantastic. Um, the ideas that they were generating and their sort of input was really valued by um, the other stakeholders and event attendees. Um, the feedback from the school that we've had about the, the 10 young people who participated has been immensely positive. The fact that they were chosen because they were a little bit disengaged from school life and not perhaps doing particularly well academically, I think was really important because although it's anecdotal, um, the teachers at the school have reported that across the board, those 10 young people have actually, in many cases, turned their lives around and started to engage much more in the school community. They feel um, trusted uh, and it's built their confidence, which is a really fantastic outcome. Uh, to be honest, it's probably more effective than any website intervention um, for uh, producing good outcomes for young people. So that's a slight irony of it in some senses, uh, but a good one that I'm very pleased about. Um, and they were also, uh, the Respect Yourself site, uh, as a piece of work, was also shortlisted for a Sexual Health, a Brooks Sexual Health Award, um, because of its involvement of young people in the development. Uh, I don't think it won. Unfortunately, it didn't win. But it did mean that the young people um, got to travel down to London um, to, to be at the awards, um, which I think was a really exciting thing for them. Um, so that's it. Thanks for listening.